All right, everyone, we start off today talking about the crisis between Palestine and Israel, but actually there's something attendant to that that I think is also, it needs to be talked about, which is the massive amount of propaganda that we're seeing right now. Link in the description from the New York Times, literally trying to blame Trump for the situation, <laughs> insinuating that uh, his foreign pollen, uh, policy failures have actually led to the current situation there, and, and of course attendant to that in, in other countries as well. This is a lie. It's clearly a way that they want to shield Beijing Biden because Biden's foreign policy f has failed already. Uh, he's not even in there, I think, for four entire months, I believe, as of a few days, he will. Not even in there for four months, a third of a year, and all of a sudden you've got multiple major foreign policy disasters as well as domestic problems, including economic, on multiple levels. And Biden's falling apart. Now, supposedly the man has 60% approval. I'm telling you push polls exist, and, and that's bullshit, but we'll get into this. First and foremost, though, there will be a pinned comment if you're watching this video on YouTube. There will be links to four other video hosting sites that I use. Keep in mind, I make two videos a day just on those sites that I don't put on YouTube. As well, I'll have a link to my Substack. I've done you know, some articles there, and I'm going to continue. I've got almost, I think, 2,800 people following on the email. Uh, list so eh, that's pretty good for a week's work anyway again link in the description to this article New York Times saying well Trump's promise of a new Middle East is falling through uh, the Abraham Accords I guess really weren't all that Trump Trump has failed again and here's the thing Trump hammered out peace deals not just there but in in Asia withdrawal deals and and got talks going with some of the most despotic nations in the world Biden did a complete 180 virtually on day one, has already insulted m many of these countries, and has, has basically reversed Trump's policies. For instance, Trump froze money aid shipments to Palestine. Now, I have no problem with Palestine, and certainly they do have the right to be angry when they're, they're living fundamentally under an apartheid state. However, <laughs> if you're giving money to the Palestinian people because you're bleeding hard, and you're like, well, they've got lack of potable water, Children are starving and stuff. The problem is that Hamas takes the fucking money. This is the same problem we have in the United States with blighted inner city areas. Oh, look, poverty's so high here in, in this this enclave of Brooklyn. Well, well, we'll give money to the local officials to help prop up the local economy, get people job training and stuff. But they squander it. 90% of that money just goes into the hands of corrupt cops, corrupt teachers, corrupt administrators, corrupt mayors and shit. And so it, it's a waste of time. It's not, it's not fruitful until you un address the underlying problems therein. thought it was funny, the idea of shelling that AP building the other day, because Hamas had set up, I guess, uh, there as well. Uh, it, I, I thought it was funny because I'm like, well, on the one hand, they did get rid of a legacy media propaganda bureau, so <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't support randomly bombing the building. Hamas arguably there, but we're not 100% sure that's necessarily the case. Uh, it's funny because a lot of the leftists are like, well, they only attacked the AP building because they don't want pictures and video coming out of, of, of the terrible things they're doing in Gaza. And I'm like, this is the smartphone era. You don't need the legacy media. They could dry up and die completely, and you'd still get your news. You just have to get it from people who aren't on the corporate dole. See, that's, that's what the AP is really worried about, because they make a lot of money making uh, U.S. state propaganda. If anything, the Israelis probably love those dudes. <laughs> so anyway, getting back on track here. The thing is, like, uh, with this article, they're trying to say, well, the Abraham Accords were great and all, but it's, it's not making lasting peace. Trump's promise of a new Middle East has been dropped. But that's because of a complete swinging around of U.S. policy. And not just in Palestine. Look at the Afghan withdrawal deal. The Afghan withdrawal deal fundamentally is a good idea. The United States spends 20 years in a country wasting its time and money creating a fairly feeble central state. Trump realizes, hey, the state itself can't, can't fend off terrorism. It's, it's not strong enough. After all this time and all this effort, really, they control a few cities, and, and that's basically all. Everything else is tribal. But if we can get the Taliban to agree that we withdraw and they don't fuck shit up, so they, they keep doing what they have been doing, the Taliban fought ISIS for a while, then the state will, will maintain. All of the outlying regions, the government will simply take sort of a we don't see what the hell you're doing approach to opium farming and arms dealing and stuff. As long as they're not attacking the state itself, they'll leave them alone and the Taliban will leave the state alone. So everybody wins. You'll have some st semblance of stability, at least in like Kabul and Gandahar and a few places. 
Biden unwisely decided, hey, the Taliban of all groups on earth is going to totally understand that we want to delay the withdrawal until September 11th for entirely posturing, self-serving, opportunistic, sloganeering bullshit reasons. And that's exactly why he postponed it, the final withdrawal, till September. Because of the optics. Because Biden wants to, he wants to push it back. He doesn't want the Trump withdrawal date, because then it's a victory for Trump. He wants the Biden withdrawal date, and he wanted to make it symbolic so that he would get kudos from all the people. Well, he ended America's longest war. No, he didn't. It's not even America's longest war. The Korean War is. You mean the longest hot war. But really, I mean, the Democrats for a while there under Obama were saying there's basically no war. It's just a minor conflict. We're just there in an advisory capacity. Well, Trump was trying to get us out of there, and Biden decided to fuck that deal up, too. Look at Syria. You can expect more uh, hardlining after Assad. Now, again, Trump very wisely took a backseat approach and let the Russians and Iranians come in and destroy ISIS. How many ISIS attacks are there now? For a while, under Obama, towards the end of his term, it was like a clockwork. Every week or so, ISIS conducted a major attack or overran a city, or we heard some new story about a new slave market with 10,000 fucking kids in it. Where was that under Trump? Within the first couple of years, they were almost snuffed out. It's because he realized the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And while it's not great to have to work with the Taliban, they're better than people that typically cut small children's hearts out and then feed it to them. That's, it's, 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 it's better than that. They're a little bit less insane. Trump's foreign policy worked. The Abraham Accords. The idea that Trump was a terrible, horrible, despotic person. Oh my God, he's never he's going to ruin everything. He's going to cause World War III. No, he got peace agreements between Israel, of all places, and four other countries that initially were rather hostile, including the Sudan. That's not easy. That sort of diplomacy takes the finesse of a person who's worked in a boardroom. The problem is that Joe Biden has never done that. Joe Biden... Once he was, not even middle age, he's a fucking my age, was already becoming a career politician. So he has to brag, oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, man, my first job was a lifeguard, and I learned a lot about roaches and how kids wanted to touch my legs, and like weird shit like that. That's the difference. It's Biden's foreign policy failures. Who's, who's in the White House right now? Is, is the New York Times acknowledging certain people's claims about the last election when it tries to blame Trump for the foreign policy of 2021? Well, I guess that's the only way we can reconcile it. He's not in there. Joe Biden is. Now, of course, admittedly speaking, he's not running the show. He just signs the papers that are handed to him by his staff. The cabal that's behind him is in charge, not Trump's people. They're all gone. The first thing Biden did is clean house and, and purge all of the Trump officials that apparently knew what they were doing in some respects because the economy wasn't collapsing. We weren't suffering from elevated inflation. Unemployment was ticking down instead of up like it is now. We didn't have this sort of bullshit going on. Because we had forced these two groups to talk together. We had forced them to come to the negotiating table through U.S. foreign policy. We have a lot of money and a lot of weapons, and people really don't want to have to look down the barrel of Uncle Sam's gun. And so we managed to get talks going. But if you don't keep that up, if you get in there and you immediately suspend that and go back to the way things were that weren't working in the 2010s or the 2000s, no shit, it caused violence. Who would have possibly suspected that that was the case? That they would look at Joe Biden and his particular suggestions and beliefs and they'd say, well, this guy don't mean business. No, he's going to do what Obama did or what W did. He's going to talk, talk loudly and carry no fucking stick. And we're going to pound each other with rockets, and nobody's going to do jack shit about it. To the point where now the Israelis might mount a ground invasion of Gaza again. How when was the last time that they did that? <laughs> I think it was quite a while ago. They weren't doing that during the Trump administration, but the legacy media has circled the wagons quite clearly. That's about all. Peace out.